Good Tuesday, everyone. I'm meteorologist Jacob Wyckoff, joined by our executive weather producer, Terry Ellison. Terry, we've done it again. What did we, we do? <laughs> we hit 90 degrees. Oh, we did. We yes. just did. Yes. Uh, breaking news of sorts. Yes. Uh, we have an official heat wave in Boston. Uh, Sunday, we were 94. Yesterday, we hit 90. And today, 90 again. So the second heat wave already of the summer. Yes. And I when you look at how many 90 degree days we've had this season, yeah. we're well ahead of the pace set the last yep. couple of years. We're now at 10 for the season. Looks like maybe some more heat into next yeah. week. I think it's safe to say um, we could easily double that by the end of the summer. For sure. Yeah. So let's hop into the graphics. We do have a next weather alert in effect, sort of a two pronged next weather alert. The first one, you step outside, you feel it. It's the heat and humidity that's around our heat indices are going to be in the mid to upper 90s to near 100 degrees. Yep. But along the way, we also have an afternoon and evening storm threat. And that's a big deal mm -hmm. because the atmosphere, you feel it, it's very juiced up. And any time it rains, it is going to When it unload. rains and pours, yes. one of those kind of days. Yeah, we'll get to that in a bit. We'll start with the heat. And there is, again, a heat advisory up 3 p.m., same as yesterday from the National Weather Service. And you don't need us to tell you, it's, it not only is it hot, but it's been extremely humid. Yeah. Just really kind of rough going outside. Um, dew points are, we'll show them in a second, are into the 70s again. Yeah. And there's that 90, so we just again, as of 11 a.m. this morning, hit 90 in Boston. Um, so a lot of folks are very close, if not... Uh, a lot of folks will just miss a heat wave. It's been 88, 89, 90, 91. You're so splitting like, hairs splitting at some hairs. point, yeah. Exactly. But but regardless, if we're looking at the official 90 degree reading, we did hit it. Uh, along the way, dew points are in the mid to low 70s. Very, very humid, tropical air mass that's in place. This air mass is somewhat broken as we go into tomorrow, but here's our feel like temperatures as we go into the noontime hour, you're talking near 100 degrees in some spots. Yeah, very similar to yesterday and Sunday. Just, uh, you know, again, the three day stretch of yeah. just uncomfortable air. And we will get a break from that. We'll show you that in a minute. But um, before we get there, we got a little bit of rough weather on the way. But there's that official heat wave. We could gain another degree or two today, but it is official already. Um, Boston, we had two heat, heat, two heat waves last summer in Boston. We've already got two this summer. And like we said, we've got a lot of summer left. So. Yep. Wouldn't be shocked to sneak another heat wave in or two. And this is a, this is what you were talking about earlier. Yep. Already the 10, uh, 90 degree days, and that's uh, too shy of last year already. And we're doubling what we did in 2023. Absolutely. And as I said, I think next week there's some signs that we could see some more heat building on in. And that is the current pattern that we're in is like sort of ebbs and flows. But when, when it is hot, it is very hot mm -hmm. and, and even extreme hot in, in you know, the last heat waves instance. So as far as our July temperatures go, we are running well above average. In fact, the eighth warmest start to the month of July currently, um, that obviously doesn't take into account today. today right. um, so we may even add even to that because we're warmer. well above that average. Even warmer, yeah. I mean, it's not just the daytime highs, it's also the nighttime lows. Yeah. Uh, this morning, Boston's low temperature was 74, which was just one degree shy yep. of the record uh, high men for the date. So it's warm nights. It's also hot days and you put that all together and we're one of the, you know, one of the warmest uh, first weeks of July on record here in Boston, at least a top 10. So you see that little swirl off the coast of Cape Cod. Uh, you can barely make out the swirl, but that's the energy from Chantal, uh, tropical system that made its landfall, uh, over the Carolinas, uh, over the last couple of days. It is no longer a named system, but there's still a little bit of energy. You still see a little bit of spin right now. We have partly to mostly sunny skies, but just within the last few frames, if you look just to the south of Albany, you start to see some of those storms firing up. Yep. Uh, so that's going to be the initiation zone that we watch for. Uh, Futurecast does a pretty good job of kind of handling the timing of things. I'm watching that time frame between about 3 o'clock and 8, 9 o'clock for the best chance for some of these storms and most of the storms I think will be south of the Mass Pike along or yeah. south of the Mass Pike. Yeah, this model shows that pretty well. You can see pretty much everything along and south of the pike and uh, now this goes over several hours and you can see that at, you know by nine o'clock this model starts to to, to um, quiet it down a little bit but yep. if you if you have storms heavy downpours for three four five six hours all kind of going over the same area that's when we start to talk about some localized flooding and yep. some issues down there uh, again mainly south of the pike um, and then most of the action sort of dies off well after sunset but uh, the SPC has that area, again, the, it, the, the darker green, again, mostly along and south of the pike, highlighted for some potential severe weather today, and they are highlighting the, the downpours and the localized flooding threat. Yeah. 
Uh, also a chance of some strong winds as well. I will say yesterday I was in Norton for a charity golf tournament and we got unloaded on. Mm -hmm. And so like you, it, it's one of those storms that yesterday that you could see the rain off in the distance. And you're like, oh boy, yeah. we are on borrowed time. And I expect the same sort of thing. How, how'd coming. you hit him? Uh, not well yesterday. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. Not, yeah. You, not well, but <laughs> okay, that's well, okay. Yeah, it's all good. that's why we play the game. Uh, there is that wind potential. I think the better chance is going to be that I-95 corridor between New York City and like DC for the chance of severe weather, but even locally, we do have the chance for some damaging wind. And these are just within those thunderstorm cells that pop up. Right. It's not gonna be just, there won't be, unless you're under one of those cells, you won't experience any Correct. wind. Um, but there certainly could be some strong wind uh, downbursts out of those cells. And the Weather Prediction Center has also highlighted that again, the, the darker yellow, sort of that same area along and south of the pike, uh, highlighted that area for some excessive rainfall. That's kind of what you talk about when we look for flash flooding. That right. Kind of thing. When, uh, when you have rainfall rates one to two inches per hour, mm -hmm. even if it's four just an hour, that adds up very quickly. Mm -hmm. um, so you mentioned uh, that heavy downpour localized flooding. The National Weather Service has issued a flood watch in effect for basically south of the pike, southern Worcester County, Norfolk County, into Bristol and Plymouth County and the Cape. Uh, those are the chances, I, I think locally at least, that would have the best chance to see some flooding. Yep, and I do think there is a ball game at Fenway tonight. We'll yeah. have to see that's, you know, right on the, they're probably on the northern edge of a lot of these storms, yep. so we'll have to kind of stay tuned on that. But I threw this graphic in because it's a little, little technical, but uh, we can measure the amount of precipitable water in the atmosphere. And this is sort of a measure from, uh, if you look at the atmosphere as sort of like a layer cake, the amount of moisture available in the yeah. atmosphere. And you can see those, this is currently those darker yellows, oranges, and reds, and that's very high on the scale. So it's basically just to, uh, to say, there's a lot of water above us right yep. now ready to be sort of flushed out. To wrung out, if you yeah. take a sponge, you just squeeze it out, that's what the atmosphere is gonna do. And it doesn't really change all that much until we get into tomorrow, when we start to see that drier air spilling in, and certainly into Thursday. We're not done with the rain, still some spotty rain chances Wednesday and Thursday, but at least the very muggy, very juiced up atmosphere is gonna be kind of gone for a little yeah. while. All right, now let's oh, a little bit more. dig it into uh, this, okay. We haven't, I haven't brought out the skew tea since yeah. winter time, I don't think, but, um, th so this is a vertical, again, very nerdy here, but a vertical profile of the atmosphere. Um, and this is later today over, and I chose uh, south of the pike and a uh, random area south sure. of the pike. And so that red line is the forecast temperature line. Uh, the green is the dew point. And that dotted purple line to the right, that's sort of going up to the right of the red line, um, that's sort of like it's mimicking if, uh, a parcel of air if you lifted it from surface level. And what this basically shows, this is sort of like a tall, skinny profile of the atmosphere, and it shows that temperatures and dew points are sort of close together for a, 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 a long ways up. Um, and this is one of those profiles that you, when you see it, you're like, okay, this could, we could have some really torrential yeah. rainfall. The, basically when the air temperature and dew points are very close, that means the air is saturated. Exactly. And so when you have it all the way up, you have a, a large column of air that's saturated. Yep. And that sort of measures what that precipitable water graphic we showed you before. And the, the P-Watt's on there, too. I don't mm -hmm. know if you can see it. 2.37 uh, inches You there can read that, that from here? E yes, I can. <laughs> okay, um. that tells our difference in age. <laughs> <laughs> I'm lucky just to see the screen, and Jacob's picking dimes across the room. Um, anyhow, uh, and the area between, and the second part of this is that we look for something called CAPE, and that's essentially something that you look for in severe weather days. It's the amount of lift in the atmosphere, and there's a pretty good area between that dotted line and the red temperature line, a pretty good open area where basically air parcels will be, you will find it relatively easy to rise and that's where you get severe weather. So yep. a little bit, bit of nerding out, but again, this is kind of behind the scenes what we're looking at and why we're thinking we may have some threat of severe weather or at least some heavy downpours today. Yeah, so when it rains, it pours, you said that mm -hmm. at the beginning, not all of us will pick up on some of the rain. So I want that to be one of the takeaways, but when it does, you need to understand where it's gonna rain, uh, you know, the urban street flooding, sort of the dynamics of falling water in your area. This model suggesting uh, parts of central Rhode Island into uh, Bristol County could pick up the bullseye, at least locally, of some rain, one to maybe three plus inches of rain. Uh, don't take this as gospel, right. but just keep an idea that where those thunderstorms line up, that's where we could see Yeah, issues. it's more, again, like you said, don't focus on the exact location. This map is just to show the idea that, okay, there could be literally nothing in, say, one town and 
two or three inches like 10 miles south yeah. of that you know so just got to keep an eye on the radar later today especially if you have outdoor plans you know uh, the kids are having a little league game or something especially south of the pike could get could get a little dicey so tomorrow we're going to take a step back temperature wise uh, along the coast there will be a sea breeze that develops and i think that's going to really hold our temperatures in check we'll call it generally mid 70s but mm -hmm. inland we could still be in the low 80s in some spots. Uh, we do still have some mugginess that we'll try to build in uh, towards Thursday, which is our next more widespread chance for some um, for some storms to move on in. Uh, and we're going to stay on the muggy side. Yeah, the really. dew points aren't going anywhere, so yeah. the temperatures are cooling off, yeah. but it looks uh, like dew points well into the 60s near 70, you know, for the next several yeah. days. So that muggy feel will stick around, but the temperatures will be cooling Correct. off, you know, 10, 20 degrees. So at least there's that. Um, finally, I, I thought we'd just briefly mention that we could use the rain as yeah. much as we probably don't want, you know, uh, flash flooding, of course. Yeah. Um, you know, really over the last month or so, the last, you know, two thirds of June and the first part of July, we're running quite a deficit. Yeah. Um, and then you see uh, over three inches of uh, below average, you know, since June. Um, and it only, and we say this again, you know, which we're not in really a drought status right now that southern New England, but. This time of year, it only takes a few weeks of really dry weather to... Especially when you're 100 degrees at, at some point. That's right. right. Like yeah. you just, you don't get the rain, but then also you bake off anything in that upper layer of the soil. How's yeah. your grass looking? I know Not my, great. Mine is yeah. quite brown. I've, yeah. I've almost given up on it, frankly. Yeah. Um, you know, it's really tough because, you know, there are restrictions and people wonder, how could we have water restrictions after we had such a wet spring? And it's like, well, all it really takes in the summertime is a... A, a Six weeks a of weeks. nothing. Yeah. yeah, exactly. And you know the ground can get really dry. So, uh, but so you might look at this precipitation and be like, oh man. But we again, it's not. There are no all-day washouts. Yeah. Just a risk of some showers each day. And again, we kind of could use a little bit. A lot of people tuning in. They're tuned into the news. They're very cognizant of what happened in Texas. Mm -hmm. Maybe they sent their kids to a summer camp yesterday, and it's mm -hmm. a sleepaway. Do people need to be concerned about what's happening? We have a, the environment here. It's 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 really you can't you can't compare what happened in Texas to what happened here. They, right. I mean, they, first off, the, you know the levels of drought and flash flooding there are much more dramatic. Sure. Um, in in New England, we just don't have now. The, not to say that some flash flooding today couldn't, you know, couldn't cause some issues, but we're right. not talking about a river. We don't have a, a, a river, river rising, rising thirty 40, feet. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so again, horrible situation out there, but. We just don't, it's just, it's apples and oranges when you try to compare sure. sort of the topography and the layout and here is, is what's different down there in Texas. And it's an example of the need to have a plan in place in the mm -hmm. event that warnings are issued, even lightning, right? It doesn't take, yep. uh, it just takes a thunderstorm to pop up. So right. uh, if you are a camp counselor, if you're a camp director, anyone that spends a lot of time outdoors, you know, have that weather plan in place. Yeah, and I think it's, again, it's hard to relate for us to Texas, but like you said, a thunderstorm, like just what's your plan? You know, when you, are, are you, I know a lot of the, the, the campers probably don't have their phones on them, but the counselors I'm sure do. When you get that warning on your phone, Yep. know what to do, where to go, all those all those different things. Have a plan, like you said. Absolutely. Yeah. All right, so our seven-day forecast, it does feature a little bit of cooler air that spills in for Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, basically below average until we get into the second half of the weekend. Uh, average this time of year, about mm -hmm. 81, 82 degrees. Uh, we will see the chance for some thunderstorms Thursday, generally kind of unsettled into Friday. Mainly dry Saturday and Sunday. Can't rule out a spotty shower here or there, but I would still say mainly dry for, for most of the yeah. weekend. And then by Monday, another chance of showers may pop up. Yeah, I, I would say, uh, you know, I'm looking forward to the weekend. I think it's going to be pretty yeah. pretty decent. Again, it will be kind of muggy, um, but certainly any showers would be few and far between. Yeah. This, I think this could be our second weekend in a row of pretty nice weather. Yeah. Uh, summer weather here uh, after so many, <laughs> so many lost weekends. Yeah. And I, last weekend broke the streak of mm -hmm. of having one day, right? Um, and that dated back to the early it was March, like fifteen weeks or it was something. It was crazy, silly, yeah. So I hope you had a chance to enjoy <laughs> that uh, today. Takeaway: Enjoy uh, the heat and humidity if that's up your that's alley. Your thing. Yeah, if that's your thing. We do have a heat wave, but watch the radar as we go into the afternoon. If you are watching this on YouTube, make sure you like and subscribe. We appreciate that. Uh, we'll have many more talks coming up in the future, but for now, have a great Tuesday, everyone.